1C of the Constitution to report to you and to the people of Kenya on the measures we have taken and the progress we have made in realizing our national values and principles of governance and to submit to you, honorable members, the progress made in fulfilling our international obligations. Since my last address, Kenya has undergone rapid change occasioned by the collective awakening of the people in the understanding that the state of nation depend on the work we do individually and collectively. This realization extends not only to what we choose to undertake, but also to how we go about securing careers, livelihoods, and contributing to the grand enterprise of nation building. There has never been doubt, and now there is none whatsoever that Kenya is a land of bold ambition, with our citizens always desiring and insisting on the best possible standards, not only for themselves, but also for their families and for our nation. Consequently, our democracy has empowered citizens to ask questions and demand changes in the way their affairs are managed driving the wheels of our nation's social, political, and economic transformation faster in the direction of excellence and prosperity. Rare are the times when leadership is ahead of the people. We are always striving to steer the machinery of state and government to keep pace with the aspirations of our citizens. We have learned through the hard as well as the more customary ways that listening is a full-time occupation of leadership and that all questions asked by the people must be answered thoroughly and in full. We have learned never to take anything for granted and make every effort to call all our people, to carry all our people along with us in the pursuit of our transformation. The context in which I make this national address is not only significantly different from previous occasions, but it is also a singular moment with unique historical implications for us all. It is an opportunity to affirm the principles and values of which our nation stands, review the steps we have taken, the path we have chosen in our journey of national development, and reinforce the commitments we have made to one another and to our beloved nation for the sake of the present and future generations. I do not take this for granted. And with utmost respect and humility before this August Assembly of the People's Elected Representatives, I desire to respond to the most pressing concerns that have been raised by Kenyans of all walks of life in recent months. To my understanding, the concerns and issues voiced by millions of Kenyans about the state of our nation deserve meaningful engagement, thorough understanding, and thoughtful response. There are dis discussions about whether leaders understand the pain, hardship, and struggles endured by countless citizens every day as they strive to make ends meet and whether the government is doing anything about it. Similarly, many struggling Kenyans impatiently wonder when will real money get to their pockets and when will the jobs promised, which they deserve, become a reality. Additionally, there has been conversations about our education system, particularly the transition to the competence-based curriculum and whether policies in this sector are working for or against Kenyans. Important questions have also been raised concerning the direction of development in relation to democracy, human rights, and fundamental freedoms, as well as the rule of law, transparency, and accountability. Another more direct question that emerges every now and then is whether public policy in this administration is in furtherance of service delivery to citizens or just in aid of political strategy. 
It is undeniable that for many Kenyans, times are hard and the struggle to meet their daily basic needs remains daunting. It is also true that these conditions have persisted for a number of years now, leading to much frustration and anxiety. Although we have gone a long way to mitigate some of these difficulties, much remains to be done, though we have laid a firm foundation for decisive intervention. I believe that it is critical for us to bear in mind that this administration was inaugurated at an extremely difficult time, characterized by domestic ch challenges, compounded by regional and global security, geopolitical, financial, as well as climate dynamics. As a result, in 2022, the country's total, total debt burden was not only immense, but it was also stacked up in the most burdensome manner, leaving very little room for investments in public service or development of critical infrastructure. The prices of basic food commodities soared as a result of a combination of prolonged drought, declining local productivity due to inadequate support, and disruptions in the global supply chain caused by the war in Europe. Kenya faced a crossroads of extremely difficult choices where defaulting on our obligations would have significantly wasn't an already perilous situation and more borrowing was not an option. It was therefore essential for us to drastically reduce expenditure, mobilize as much as possible resources domestically and curtail waste. As I informed the nation then, matters were going to be to get more difficult before they could get better. And we all had to tighten our belts and work hard under very unforgiving conditions. We had staked the fate of our ambitious bottom-up economic transformation agenda on easing the stress that the economy was in and the strain citizens underwent while creating room for the implementation of our transformative interventions. Members, I give this background to underscore two very important facts. First, we haven't been watching helplessly and doing nothing as adversity took a toll on the economy and undermined the livelihoods and well-being of the people. On the contrary, we have been working tirelessly to steer, to steer the country away from the brink of unprecedented economic collapse and onto a more promising trajectory. The second point 